Let's chat to some of the runners. First of all, Fishman. Ja, so weit, so gut. We'll see what's in the rain. You're saying that uh, the weather's not so good at the moment and the rain? So wie das Wetter jetzt ist, es wird brutal. Yes, it's very hard. He's going to need some strong legs today. What about uh, Zadrobliak? It's the fellow who won the uh, San Sebastian Classic a few years ago as, as a road rider. And he said uh, he's not so good this season so far, he's been ill. And he's hoping his form's coming back. Yeah, I hope his form comes back for the future. We wish you the best of luck too. And there we are, the same course as the girls' road. This time, as far as the men are concerned, they've got uh, five laps of this one to go. It's going to be a long race, so you can all feel that. The girls took, as you saw, just over two hours to complete their course. So the riders here, the men, are going to be in the saddle for probably something uh, close on three hours, I would think. And again, that all-important start, that long climb up the road ahead of them, out of the town of Hufalais, not far from where the famous Liège, Baston Liège uh, bike race goes. Quite well-known local territory. What a nice shot, look at that one then, as the field being led away. And up then to the front we're getting the fast men begin to shell off the, the back markers at the moment. Barry Clark nicely positioned in there. Engine out. And Gary Ford just put him go through in the Scott colours. He just changed from his previous sponsor uh, to the Scott team. And I think that will certainly aid his ambitions to go and race over uh, in America and Canada. As George Beckel led that little up through, just behind there. Number 37, Bait Vabel, but these riders here trying to pick the best course on this very difficult one. They're closely packed together. One fall here could really have them in all sorts of trouble, piling into each other. And I'm not surprised, and it's down to Shanks's pony then for Daniel Bruschi of Italy, who did a fine ride. Uh, there, Jan Wajak, uh, followed by Gary Ford. There he is now, the Brit rider in just behind him. That's a good move, the two of them getting close up, but what a great start here. Lenny Langer from uh, uh, Denmark, the Christensen, uh, Jenny Langer uh, Christensen, he is uh, really going away from this lot then, so can Lenny hang on? He's looking good. Well, he beat to Denise in the Danish Championship, so he's certainly shown his fine form before. We've not seen him go as well as this, though, and he's causing consternation as Frischnet's coming up. Tinker Jure is with him as well. Good start for Tinker, next marathon runner, digging deep into his rear to stay at the front. The world champion Denise going through. Not had too much of a good start the season so far. And there's Barry Clark, just trying to stay in the top ten. Well, he has got an enormous lead right now. That's uh, a tremendous start indeed. And the rest now are just going to have to try and pick up his wheel tracks. He goes through. It's Jurez that's come up into second place then. As I mentioned before, I remember this lad when he was riding Mount, uh, BMX tracks and he was a great bike handler. But uh, he's well known for crashing out or puncturing and having problems. Krishnet just gone through, winner of the first round in Barcelona. Here comes Kluger, he's wearing a different strip, by the way, if you've been watching our round so far, that's a yellow jersey for Kluger, as he's just gone through now, still uh, sponsored by Focus by Mike. I'll have to try and find out for you, whether well, that's his own bike or something. Uh, as Clark goes through, this is uh, all the top men now, have found their way up near the front, and it's good to see the Brits in amongst this one. But struggling further back, Tim Gould has started today, still trying to get over that virus problem. In fact, he's, he's having problems sleeping at night, so I understand it's tiring him down somewhat. So Tim's still in there. Tim Davis is riding as well in this. The Brits, Peter Stevenson's in there. So we've got quite a number, but they're further back off the pace right now. And the Danish rider then, Christensen, has set a really hot pace. There's no doubt about it, the rest are, are going to have to try and do something about this one, but has he gone off too quick? Jurez after him. And I can just see his spare tubes in his back pocket. He's had more than his uh, trouble in the past of having punctures. As uh, Into third space goes the leader on the Grundig World Cup at the moment. Mike Klug moving up there to fourth. This is nicely poised at the moment, but they've got to catch that flying player at the front. Uh, Fishnet goes through. And enthusiastic German support there for Kluger on his way up into fourth place. Well, we're going to take a short break. Do come back for more action from the Grundig. Aber immer öfter. Weil es alkoholfrei ist? Nein, weil es ein Bier ist. 
Klaus Thaler. Alles, was ein Bier braucht. Well, that's an interesting battle, and welcome back to here because Klug has now moved up into uh, third place. I think it is. That's a very nice move on his part. Some people had a bad start. Rick, we understand, has uh, just been sidelined in the start. Not sure it's crash or what, but he's a bit out of action at the moment. So that's as George Becker went through, and then right here, that's Jan Rajak for Scott. There's the Alsop uh, beam suspension, if you just watch that one, that funny looking bike, I think it was Tim Rumford on that one, it was, yes, as Gally Ford comes through, neatly getting over those, uh, those, those routes. And Hank Jennings as well. Oh, Tomax moving his way. We've not seen him. He started very slowly indeed. Tomax now put on the power. Well, last week he uh, he said he was waiting for Belgium. He reserved a bit of strength. He, he uh, didn't last week ride, as he said, flat out. He was deliberately just... Oh, in the background, that's Frischneck. I wonder where he'd gone to, and I think he's got problems. Let's hope our camera picks it up. Wait for these riders to go through. And there he is. He's walking back. Frischneck, it looks like his gear's gone. And that's it. Frischnet is not going to finish this one, the winner of the first uh, round, then second round went to Mike Kluger with that man into second place and he's not going to be in this any longer, oh! Ah, just shows you the difficulty of this course, he looks absolutely shaken doesn't he, <laughs> not surprised either. And this man is still setting up pace at the front, so Christensen, on this, the third lap. The bad news, uh, back behind Nicky Craig, the down back rider, suffered two punctures, in fact, on that uh, second lap. And uh, Clark has punctured as well, so he's, he's way off the pace as well. So uh, Barry Clark chasing his way back. He's lost something like four minutes right now. So the British hope's beginning to disappear. And this man here knows that he's got to really try and close the gap on those two men in front. He showed some immediately uh, return to form last week at uh, Bassano del Grappa. Mike Clue looking very comfortable indeed. World professional cyclocross champion. And Rijak, another ex uh, cyclocross man going through. So. Battle down behind them there for the 10th place. George Bickle just gone after Ernst uh, Deniff. Now well, Price is not having such a good ride either, but look at Tomac coming up. Price has gone back into about 8th place, but Tomac's coming powering through right now. He's picking men off one at a time, much to the amusement of the crowd. John won this one last time, the, the round, as he went straight back to the top of the, uh, of the, of the leaderboard last uh, year when he won here, as these two leaders take it very, very carefully indeed. Yeah, they're, they're still looking good, these two, but the gap's coming down all the time now, and uh, Tomac leading the charge from behind here. Klug nearly takes uh, Jan Vajak out, but there he's moving up into third spot as well. That's another good, well-calculated uh, ride as far as he's concerned. Oh, <laughs> Barry Clark's gone down! Oh, no! Well, he's had more than his fair share of trouble, hasn't he? What a puncture. Now this has gone. And uh, the crowd here, Julie Furtado, watching the men go through. And there we are. Uh, Klug has now caught up with the leader. He's taken on a fresh pair of specs here to keep the grit out of his eyes. Riding number three last week, he was number 13. He turned upside down to be 31 on the... Uh, on his feet on his bike, and the man wearing number 13 right now is here, and it's Tomac up into third spot. John Tomac showing all that determination. Again, a good roadman, ex-BMX rider as well. He's been in the sport now for many, many years. He's a dollar millionaire from uh, cycle racing, and he's now trying to get up there to those two leaders, uh, Klug and Christian, because uh, the man that's blown out the picture is Tinker Jerez. He's actually retired, so Tinker's out of action, and Kluger is plowing through. Well, a well-judged performance as far as he's concerned. And Tinker Jerez must be ruining the, the day today that he set off at uh, such a great rate of knots. And then now he's blown a gasket. And uh, so Tinker's out of the, uh, the battle for that first and second place. 
And there you can see it, seven kilometres left of this course. Five laps they've done of the 14-kilometre course. A quick bit of a calculation on my mental arithmetic here makes it, what, uh, 70 kilometres as such. So that's well over 40 miles, and no wonder they're getting on to up towards three hours of racing by the time they finish. So Christensen, our early leader, now dropping back off the pace, but he's done a great ride here. We've not seen him in the earlier rounds, uh, and he's come here, I think, has shaken a few people. Be interesting to see if he's going to go to America and continue while they wait for the rounds at uh, Plymouth in Great Britain and the one in Berlin. Well, this is a Berlin now coming in. That gives him two on the trot. But he's in trouble. Oh, he is in trouble. He looks hurt to me. He's grimacing there. Tomac chasing after that second spot, but ahead of him, Christensen. Looks like he might have made it, but Tomac is coming up at him as fast as he can do. But I think he's going to have to settle for third. Yes, he is, because into second place, Christensen's coming in now. Early leader. Looks remarkably calm, cool, and collected. Well, this man is doesn't look happy at all. He's just won the race, and uh, you can see the state of his face and the conditions today. That's what happens when he gets a bit of rain in uh, in Belgium. You know, he won't even talk to us at the moment. I'm not surprised. He's absolutely shattered with that. He came through so well towards the end. Further back, Barry Clark on his hands had trouble. Oh, that's the reason. Look at the blood. Probably one or two ladies have fainted. I shouldn't have said that, perhaps, but uh, he's got hurt. Oh, that'll make him feel better. Well, with the first two in third place for Johnny Tomac, who is well respected and loved by the Belgian crowd. They've known him for his racing days over here on the on the road. Winner last year now. Happy I think we third place. And let's see the final result then because we've just seen the top three come in. And uh, there we are, Clue, Christian and Tomac. Uh, Wyjack, very good ride too here, this one from Gary Ford. That lad has certainly set the cat amongst opinions with his performance. Bad uh, news though as regards Barry Clark because uh, he snapped his saddle bolt, bouncing back on the saddle like a, a cowboy leaping on his horse out of a saloon. Uh, but uh, he's into yeah, sixth place. Yeah, that's what I had about an rückstand. But I knew that the car, die, die vorne waren, sicherlich nicht, nicht wissen, oh, was like the car was going to do. But I knew that the car and I think it was for me a poker game. And he said yes, and he had one and half minutes to make up. And he had one half minutes to make up. And he had one half minutes to make up. And he had one half minutes to make up. And he had one half minutes to make up. Uh, he just had to hope that the leaders blew. Well, the leaders did blow and had all sorts of mechanical trouble. Barry Clark finished in 26th place despite that, uh, that problem with his uh, saddle, but he maintains uh, an eighth overall and Gary Ford sixth overall in the Grundig Championship. Well, stay with us. The World Cup more action will be coming up on Eurosport. In fact, every Thursday, bringing you the best in mountain biking. Myself, David Duffield. Time to say bye-bye.